Today we are going to connect a WaveShare 5 inch display with a Beagle Y AI. Um, and we'll go through the steps, the physical steps that, that are needed to do. There's also a very minor uh, extlinux.conf uh, text file update, uh, which will also cover as well. Now the display itself, there are multiple WaveShare display, displays. This one is a five inch display. There is a seven inch display, which is also working fine with, with the same configuration that we use for the five inch display. But then there is an eight inch display beyond that. That requires special software. So this is only valid for the five inch display and the seven inch display, not the eight inch display. All right. So when you get this board from, I mean, this display from WaveShare, you get a cable. Uh, you need to buy an additional adapter which converts the 18 pin uh, DSI signal for the wave share which is what the original Raspberry Pi 3 uh, used to have uh, into what we call as a CMIO display module. Uh, this is an adapter that you can buy from either Amazon WaveShare they actually manufacture this which converts this cable into the smaller 22 pin cable that uh, CMIO interfaces uses. Uh, as such, it's rather easy to put things together, but let's walk it through. Uh, the main trick that you should probably remember is that there is a blue and the connector, the silver connector side. The blue is where uh, something like the plastic, the black plastic, that you can probably see, would come against. So if you're lost as to whether the which should it be connected like this or like this, or how should I connect this out? Look at the direction that the blue thing is coming, uh, and that's where the sorry. So look at the plastic where the plastic is coming down, and that is the direction where the blue surface will be. It's meant to smooth the insertion out and push the connector up into the signal. Okay. Now I'm going to take photos and add edit the video with those photos with the zoom in. Uh, that we can see this thing very clearly. So, I'll show the assembly and then we can look at a uh, little bit of details. So, first thing I'm going to assemble, uh, I'm going to keep my keyboard aside so that I have space. Right. So, we're going to uh, pull this cable out. Right. And since the plastic in this is below, all right, <coughs> I put the silver side up and then clip it in. Be careful when you're pulling this out with your finger, uh, don't use too much force, otherwise you'll break the plastic uh, in which the connector becomes useless. You'll get into a bit of a problem after that. All right, so this is connected. So the next one to connect down the chain is this. Again, on this connector again, the, the plastic moves front and back. Okay, so move it out. Now, in case you do play with the other side, which is the CMIO display, it's like a flip thingy on this side. It just flips up, okay? Uh, so I'm not going to mess with that at the moment. So in this case, this side of the display, it comes out and the plastic is downside. So we've got to change, turn the display over so the cable fits in. Push the cable through carefully. See. <clears throat> see that so it's all the way in the plastic is uh, below so the blue side is below and then we clip this side up okay and that's it so this side is connected <coughs> all right so next is the actual board side of the connection so I'm bringing Beagle Y here, uh, this has only one DSI interface, okay? So there are two DSI, uh, DSI I mean, rather, there's a 22 pin connector. The connector below is capable of, so the, the one above over here, the one that I'm pointing at here, right, on top, uh, next to the um, HDMI and serial port, this guy over here. This is only capable of doing CSI. Basically, you can connect a camera sensor to it. The one on the bottom is capable of either doing camera, CSI, or using DSI. So when we apply the overlay uh, for the display, 
we are setting the mux as we call it essentially it is a, it's choosing either csi or dsi uh, to pick dsi okay now note the plastic on this one the plastic is outside okay so again the the connector just pops up but you have to be careful if you use too much force the plastic will break okay so we don't want that so now i'm gonna adjust my display a little bit here and bring it from the back back <clears throat> Insert it in carefully. There we go. And then press the plastic in. And that's it. That's all you have to do to get the DSI display working. Okay. This thing is twisted up. Let me clean that mess a little bit. All right. <clears throat> now that I've done this, I've connected my keyboard and mouse over here. Okay, so all I'm going to do is provide. All right, in this video, what I'm going to do is to uh, capture, I mean, modify the uh, ext Linux file so that uh, uh, the board is set up to use the DSI. Okay, now to do that, we open up our Windows Explorer, uh, go to E Drive. With, in my case, it is the E drive, but wherever the SD card is inserted. Uh, if you go to overlays folder, okay, now how this works is uh, you have a base device tree and then you're laying an overlay on top of it on the device tree uh, to give the description of the extra hardware that you are connected. Uh, and to do that, there's a bunch of overlays depending on the board that you have. Ours is a Beagle YAI. So it is this one that we are looking at. You see this? So we are using a Beagle One AI R5 7-inch panel. In my case, I'm using a 5-inch panel, uh, but it really doesn't matter. Um, the timing is pretty much the same. So take this file name, okay? Control C. And if you go to the file called ext Linux and you open up, um, let's say with Notepad. And you scroll down, you'll see something like the default. Okay. Uh, here it says FTD overlays, which is what the device tree overlays are. And all we have to do is save the um, store the overlay file that you have that you're using here. Now overlay files can be listed as slash overlay slash whatever the next overlay is, and so on. And the overlays are applied left to right. So if there is conflict, uh, like you're using two camera sensors, both for the same CSI, uh, then there is a definite conflict, in which case the one that is being on the right takes precedence of the one on the left. Essentially, it'll apply the left and then apply the one on the right on top. So just be careful about that. Otherwise, it's, uh, it's as simple as putting this line in, saving it, and uh, ejecting the folder out. And you're all done. Provide the power supply thing. Uh, this should have a touch screen as well. Uh, so in theory, you don't need a keyboard and mouse, but um, if you want to type in a thing, it's kind of handy. You can also use the VNC interface to type stuff up, but just in case. Now, I have not connected anything else. There's no HDMI cable connected. There's nothing of that sort, okay? So it's just the board and the display that we just connected together and I have a USB dongle for my wireless keyboard and mouse. It takes a, around a minute or so to boot up and as you can you just saw the flash the display is up the panel is coming online and voila we have the mouse oh. the screen is not enabled but the mouse is working See. There we go. Yay. We have a tiny little shell prompt where we can run commands that we want. And as usual, let's run our edge top. CPU load, hardly anything. Memory utilization somewhere in the same range. 
And that's more or less it. Congratulations, we have a DSI display working with our uh, outboard button. Um, hopefully by the time we make a release, we'll probably have the touchscreen also working. Uh, but that's a separate problem of its own. And if I press the power up button, what happens? Yay, look at that. The power up button appears here. And you select shut down. And the board properly powers off. And once the red LED goes off, then you can power off. Pull off the power.